All right, a couple loose ends here. I've got a giant's coal and Easterner's ashes. So let's try handing these off. Ah, gracious, passing fine ash thou'st given. Let this ash be stone nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> I always let it play out because I hope that she says something new, but doesn't really usually. Hidden Blessing fully restores FP. Is that new? The tough thing about this store is that it's always items you've seen before, pretty much, because you've seen them in the world, and it's like, oh, now you can buy them. So then, like, trying to spot what's new is hard sometimes. Ooh, Large Titanite. That might be new. There's definitely a time, that w there's definitely a time where that wasn't there. So, so I can buy infinite uh, normal Titanite and, or, yeah, Titanite and Large Titanite. So now, if I have the souls, I can just stock up, although running around in a place like Isolith, for example, Gladas will also very quickly stock me up on those kinds of resources. Scimitars, and... Oh, a washing pole. I don't think that was there originally. That's the that's the ridiculously huge katana with a surprisingly bad deck scaling at its starting level. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Here, Here's some new stuff around here. I think the Undead Legion here was, was here before, but, uh... There's the Armor of Favor. All over here, that's Lautrec's set. Helm of the Pitiable Embraced Knight depicts the affection of his goddess Fina. Adrift on a sea of isolation, his only faith in the love of his goddess remained true, and so the knight forsook all else. His face is crafted to depict the goddess's embrace, quite ignoring the fact that her love is, in fact, as fickle as the weather. Um, everything else is repeating. Then there's the Eastern Helm, which was something you could originally find way off in, uh, Brightwood Forest? Blightwood Forest? I'm really embarrassed by how I've, just, I've a lot of the names of the Dark Souls 1 locations in particular that aren't super sto story intensive, I definitely, I'm losing a little bit. Dark, Dark Root Garden? I changed every word in my name, so either I'm right now, or none of it's right. <laughs> uh... Distinctive helm made in the Eastern Land, the exquisite craftsmanship and artistic design make these prized pieces of the collection of any nobleman. Offers excellent damage absorption, particularly from slashing attacks from katanas, which are commonly encountered threats in battles found in the East. So yeah, it's a uh, it's the Japanese armor set more or less, so it has specific resistances to their types of weapons. Then you have Smo oh, and the entirety of Smo's armor is in here now. Grotesque uh, grotesque armor associated with Smo, the last knight to stand in defense of the ruined cathedral boasts extens extremely high defense and can be done by humans, but not without great difficulty. Does the whole set have super high... Oh yeah, it's not like it has a strength requirement or anything, it's just super freaking heavy. Uh, my weight cap is 52, and this chest piece is 23, so it's one, one, eye, one piece of the set is already half of my entire armor set. Huh. Black iron, I think we've seen before, executioner set. Yeah, there's a lot of pieces around here. Lloyd Shield Ring and... Ooh, that's one. That's a new one. Wood Grain Ring. This special ring is crafted in the Eastern Land. It's made of metal, but with a wood grain crest on its surface, slows equipment degradation. Wielders of swords originating in the same region follow practice of inscribing special words on their blades, their swords, and are naturally drawn to this ring. That makes sense, because katanas fall apart really easily, actually. So having an item like that would be handy to avoid the quick degradation. Uh, whips are also problematic for that regard. Ashen One, be sure to bring more souls. <laughs> I keep expecting her to say something new about each uh, Ashes, and unfortunately she's only had something to say about one of them, which is, feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity. See you back yet, by the way? Nope. Ah, well met. Tis good to see ye in good health. What needs smithing this day? My, my. The coal of that peaceable giant. Seems like ages past. I imagine his passing was long ago. I miss the old bugger, I do. My thanks. I'll be sure this coal is put to good use. I'll be smithing weapons never afore seen by the likes of ye. It's but a small service to pay my humble respects. 
Interesting. So he he does remember the giant from Anne Orlando. So this is definitely the same Andre from the first game. Which is interesting, because yeah, I've heard that if you murder him, he just comes back if you if you rest at the bonfire. I don't really feel like testing it, in case it's people putting false information online to mess with people, because that's what they do. But uh, I've heard that he just keeps coming back if you try to kill him. I think that happens with him, the Handmaiden, and the Firelink Shrine uh, Keeper, the Firekeeper, I mean. So like, for once, there's actually defense against that, whereas in like, Demon Souls, if you kill the lady who levels you up, it's like, well, I guess you just can't level up now. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, by the way, if you find anything... Nope, that's still more tutorial dialogue. I want to see if she he had anything new to say. All right, let's just get this inevitable part of the thing out of the way. Oh, you you ripped my menu down. <laughs> I preemptively menued so you wouldn't talk over it. <laughs> All right, black fire bomb. I'm leaving this one. So I want what I get for this one for sure. Large titanite. We got a titanite chunk. So now I have two of those. That's good for me. Next up. Uh, yeah, it's under consumables. We need the Sieg brow. Where is it? I haven't used them yet. There it is. Armor of the Sun. So yes, the item we get from one lovable character from the first game is also, hey, get another lovable item from the sec from the first game. Chainmail armor and a white coat featuring a large uh, rendition of the holy symbol of the sun. The choice attire of a singular knight of the sunlight from a previous age. The symbol was painted by the knight himself, but the armor never bore any special power, sacred or otherwise. Yeah, so yes, we have the, the Siegmeier armor with the weirdly passive-aggressive sun on the, on the front of it. Oh, the amazing, dumb-looking armor. I love it. I love the dumb... Okay. Looking through what else I have here... I think I'm largely missing other items that would be useful for this. We can trade the Seed of the Tree of Giants for the leg. Yes, I am just going off a of wiki at this point. There's things that I consider spoilers, and then there's things where I'm like, okay, here's the, here's the, here's the crow tr table. <laughs> I never really care about spoilers for the, uh, the table of things that you can trade for certain things with the, uh, crows. We'll trade a Divine Blessing. I, 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 I never end up using them anyway, even though they're really good items. Very good. So now I get now I have my carving. Let's try equipping that. Where is it? There we go. It's the carvings, which I think you only first you first saw them in a. Very good. <laughs> you saw them for the first time in a, the Dark Souls One expansion, I want to say, and then never before. Let's see. Obvious thing on the list next is a homeward bone. Oh. Did I already do that trade? Let's see, did I already trade for the iron? Oh yeah, I did. Never mind. There's the iron bracelets. My bad. Let's see, I did tr I did the legs. We're dressing up like Siegmeier now. But the tough thing, the iron helm requires a lightning urn, which we have not seen yet. That's, uh, that's definitely gonna be later in the game. So for anyone wondering, the, uh, shield requires you to trade an undead bone shard, and the helm requires a lightning urn. So lightning urn's just something I haven't seen yet, I believe, and undead bone shards are kind of valuable, so I'm not really planning on trading one for a while until I've maxed out the inevitable cap on that. I switched to this, uh, this separate armor. What's, what do they call it in this game? Probably just the knight helm, right? Lothric knight. There we go. Just because the, uh, the brass helm was a totally different color of metal than the rest of it. This one kind of is, because it's so shiny, but, uh, at least it's not brass on iron, which looks strange. And, I've, the important thing is I got that second chunk, so I'm gonna be increasing the rapier's damage. Base damage increases by 9, and scaling damage increases by 8. For another 17 damage again. Very welcome. It'll be, it'll be another 4 Titanite chunks before I can upgrade it to 8. And then, so we need 10 Titanite chunks to make it to, to total to get to 9 then, and then a slab. Wow. Yeah, 8, 9, 10. We still have 3 upgrades left. This thing's gonna get powerful. It's gonna be an effective weapon. This next detail is definitely from the comments. I missed out on a little thing in the corner here. 
just a minor thing. Well, it's a kind of a big thing to find, but a minor thing to miss. This over here on the left. There it is. Missed out on a chest opportunity. Don't mind me. Uh. Oh, you nasty. All right, you're a real chest. They're being creative about this. There we go. There's Nessa shard. Woohoo! If you if you look back there, there was a. Uh, they keep putting things over the chain. They know that we know about the chain. Well, to be fair, they put it there on purpose, so they, they knew that we would find out about the chain. But uh, now, that's the second time, the first time being in uh, the Farron Keep swamp area. It's, this, it's the second time where I've, <laughs> they've had debris covering the chain, so you can't tell if it's a mimic or not. And so we find ourselves in Irithil Dungeon. And yes, I reinforced the Estus Flask, so... For the record, our new cap is 15 Estus Flasks plus 10. I think that's... I was gonna say that's the highest amount of Estus Flasks in the game, but I, I guess you had 20 in Dark Souls 1 if you were at very specific levels of Ember at very specific, like, very specific Kindle locations. It pretty much had to be Firelink Shrine or something, I think. It, there was there was really specific rules about how things work. Estus Flasks have gotten a little simpler over time, actually. Bravery required to head, but yeah, 20 is the same number from Bloodborne if I remember correctly, so it's... So getting up to 15 just definitely feels like an influence of like a compromise between Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne on some level. So, but it means we have three more shards and three more undead bone sh uh, shards to find before I can uh, stop using those and maybe consider trading one of them at the uh, crows. Hello? By the way, this, this silly armor and everything... I think, like, it's covered, it's got, like, grass shoulders, and it's got a, like, a hand-painted, uneven sun with a weird face on it that's not, not centered on the armor, and it's all frayed and awkward and looks handmade. I think a lot of us sympathize with, uh, with, uh, Solaire from the first game, uh, not, even, not only just because he's optimistic and helpful, but also because, at the same time, oh, fuck me. Bad time to be talking about optimism, huh? Hi. No, no. They're just... Yeah, they're just regular old hollows. It shouldn't be a big deal so far. It's just... Bad sounds to hear in my ear holes. Jeez. Why? But uh, we, I think we sympathize with, with him and we like him and we relate to him because... He's got like this childlike optimism to him. You gonna do it to me again? I was tight tonight. Like, he, he's, he's, he's the stereotypical hero, he's your, he's your Link stand-in for this game. He's someone who's like, I'm gonna go save the world, and I put together my tunic, and I got my sword, and I'm gonna go ri liberate this kingdom, and solve all these problems. And people think he has this dark history that in part might be part of why he's trying to fix these things. That's, n okay. I'm worried about that thing. I'm worried about that thing having spe- does it see me already? Oh, it aggroed on me already. Alright, I assume that was so that was petrification stuff, right? Oh, it's it's lantern changes color based on whether it's whether it sees me or not. Interesting. In fact, this is very Tower of Latria looking with the the big open center area with with little catwalks along the walls and something patrolling with a lantern that you can sort of stealth around. It doesn't seem interested in moving anywhere though, so I guess I just have to deal with it. So Hi. Ow, rude. None of that, please. Excuse me. Rude. Gonna have to ask you to stop. Oops. Sorry, I broke your pottery. Getting footsteps now. Oh, the leeches are back. Should probably just go ahead and equip that uh, torch then. Oh, it puts me over 70. Sadness. Sadness. I don't want to be over 70. I want to roll. We'll just keep it in mind for later, I guess. I can just equip it when I need to. Be wary of right. Yeah. That's generally how side paths work. But in essence, I think that, uh... I think that, uh... Solaire, I keep wanting to say Siegmeier, and I can't stop. Uh... Oh, wait, this is very Tower of Lature, uh, With these, uh... Flat out having people behind doors you can open, and you can stab at them before you go in and stuff like that. Any ambushes on the roof? This would be cool. They, they, they know what people like. They, uh... 
They use everyone's favorite location from Dark Souls 1, and now they're using what is often the most praised location in, uh... Demon Souls? <clears throat> all the way down to... <clears throat> all the way down to being a prison that is underground, and... Maybe not underground, but just a very confined-looking prison area with catwalks and side passages, and... Patrolling lantern enemies that have some kind of defense mechanism they're, trying, they're planning on using when they see you. She's really staying still. Alright. Watch out. There we go. She is backstabbable. There we go. I'm a little worried about finding out what they're capable of because... Oh! 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 Because in a... Demon's Souls, there were weird Cthulhu monsters that had a tendency to grab you and stab you through the chest. Somewhat reminiscent of the similar tentacle-faced monsters you would see in Bloodborne at a later date. This may be a good time to equip alluring skulls if I don't have them already, if I want to. There we go. If there's ever a time to use them, we just go and un unequip the other other bombs, I guess. If there's ever a time to use these bomb these uh, skulls, it's probably these patrolling characters that don't seem to turn around in any meaningful time. Granted, they don't seem dangerous so far, so it's probably- it could be a waste. But sometimes I just want to play around with it, because honestly, I never freaking use alluring skulls anyway. There's the famous tutorial moment. Beware of misfortune. Where's the ambush? <laughs> Stop it. Why? Are we just doing jump scares for funsies now? Oh, hey. That's one of those barrels that I think is full of souls and stuff like that. Okay, well you see me. So what is he- Oh! Wait, what? Whoa! What is happening? My maximum hit points just reduced significantly. 500- Oh, they're going back up, though. Wow. They, they, yeah, they went down to, like, less than half of their cap. Well under half. So that's what they do if they see you long enough. Okay, that's definitely a reason to use Alluring Skull, then. If I can get them to look away at the right moment. Do some anti-stealth measures. Or, do some stealth measures, I mean. Try Demise. <laughs> Try doing a murder! Oh, look, there's one down there. That's a good target. You deserve this! Sorry, but not sorry, I guess. We can't kill these guys, they might be NPCs. Oh god! They're not NPCs. I think. They're probably not. Probably not. Well, they've gotten easier to kill. Ow. See? I'm checking first. I'm walking up to them one by one so we can make sure they're not NPCs so no one gets mad at me for killing the Nana. Which is not a sentence I thought I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, they're horrible monsters full of corpses that writhe in a cage and punch you. You can't get mad at me for attacking them on per at first attack at first uh, sight. That's silly. That was a silly thing to. That was a silly way to way to hide an NPC. Although to be fair, it's just like one. It's kind of just a random line of dialogue. Probably it probably impacts how another NPC behaves. But that's about it. Hello. Oh, you're one of those guys. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. I saw your silhouette in the corner, but I did not realize what you were. Alright, uh... Aha! Look, I'm doing all the things that I learned. There's the bleed-destroying thing. So we have something that destroys the bleed. We have alluring skulls to try to lure away the patrols. I'm checking the stupid cages to see if they're gonna talk to me about the Nana. But, uh, so far they're all dead. They're all very killable little bastards, aren't they? None of you are gonna wake up because of Hanna-Barbera rules. You're all dimly lit. So I know that you're all not- you're all just physical objects and not characters. It is remarkable how much that stays true. Ooh, old sorcerer set. Much like the Hanna-Barbera cartoons, you can just look at those guys and be like, Nope, none of those ones are gonna get up the lighting engine behaves differently based on whether or not they're uh, gonna get up or not. Because it treats them either as environmental objects or as enemies, which the game animates differently. That leech is on the ground? I feel like those ones are gonna get up then. Hi! Nope, nope. Oh! 
Who's throwing a tantrum? Here she is. She's throwing a rude little tantrum. Ow, you have reach. Gra Ow. Rude. Ow. Ow. Fine. Rude. All right, wait, hang on a second. Uh. All right. One of those real quick. That was cl I almost let it. I, 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 I figured I'd wait till after the fight, but it was actually filling out sooner than I thought I would. Can I reach you? No? Come here. Asshole. Oh, I can't open it. He was totally doing the whole, I can't kill him yet, I need him. He needs to open the door. So he had stood like a little bit further back to try to get me to let, let him out. I'm fat rolling. Might as well finish this area though, because I need to get past the leech monsters. Maggot monsters. I think they are supposed to be maggots actually. The idea being that because you're undead, they actually are quite fond of eating your flesh. Because normally maggots are actually okay for having in your wounds, or supposedly, because I would use that for they'd use that for medicine because they'd eat, they would eat a they would eat away rotted flesh, but leave leave behind the uh, the non rotted flesh, the the uh, living flesh. But uh, not sure. In this case, we're undead, so I, I assume they just they would just be lethal to us ultimately because they would just eat our everything. I can't get over there, can I? On that ledge, that just seems like a seems like it's not one of my goals.